Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, I'm just going to do an impromptu uh, live stream of just me practicing. Um, minor, not minor pentatonic, I was about to say that, but uh, a minor uh, arpeggio, minor seven arpeggio. Uh, just getting that shape under my fingers. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not really good at it. So I just got to practice it and get it ingrained because a lot of that stuff is in licks and things so i just want to be prepared for that what's some new castle player too so if you guys want to practice along with me you can i'm gonna let's see if i can get it at 120 uh, probably for the next 30 minutes or so so today is not really a fancy uh you know the fancy live stream with the setup i just wanted to share what i'm working on right now What's up, Nicholas? Where are you guys from? Where are you guys watching? What time is it? I know it's like 9 o'clock here in Chicago. PM, well, 8.30. 8.30. So let me know where you're from. What's up, Pick and Stone? Nice to have y'all. I'm just working on some minor, minor uh, arpeggios. What's up, Jabril? Samarion, what's up? How y'all doing? Let me know if you can hear me and see me. I'm down in the basement in my in my house. And uh and yeah. Just want to make sure you guys can hear me. Is this too loud? I'm not gonna let's see if I put my uh take my mute out. See if it's too loud. <laughs> How's that? How's my trumpet sound? Is that too loud or too... Is that distorted? Let me know. If it's cool, then just put a number one in the chat. If it's not, then let me know. But what I'm doing is really not for beginners. Isaac says number one. Nicholas says number one. Excellent, excellent. So what I'm practicing is not really for beginners. Uh, especially if you don't have a one and a half octave range. Anthony says one. So you really have to know your notes. So there's no music on the screen for this one. Ruben says, nice teaching and lessons. Thank you, Ruben. So I'm going to start on the, on the lowest note possible on the trumpet. Thank you, Caleb, for number one, for letting me know. I'm starting the lowest note, low F sharp. What's up, Diz? And I'm just going to go, I'm going to do the minor seventh arpeggio. So I'm at 66 BPM. Mm, I'm going to do eighth notes. All right, so <laughs> YouTube is going to cut off on me. Jesus. All right, here we go. Sorry, y'all. YouTube is acting strange. All right, here we go. So I'm starting on the lowest note. Lowest known uh, eighth notes. Well, these are eighth notes. So that would be F sharp, A, C sharp, E natural. F sharp, A, C sharp, E natural. Those are the notes that I'm playing. So those are eighth notes. Next note is going next arpeggio. I'm gonna go up a half step. It's gonna be G, B flat, D, F, natural. G, B flat, D, F, natural. Again, those notes are G, B flat, D, F natural. G, B flat, D, F natural. The last one was F sharp, A, C sharp, E natural. F sharp, A, C sharp, E natural. Just in case you guys need the notes, if you want to practice along with me. All right, so I'm going to do uh, F sharp again and then G, 
uh, G minor again. F sharp. <laughs> G natural, G minor. All right, next one is going to be A flat. Again, we're doing this at 66 BPM. So A flat. So that's going to be A flat, C flat, E flat, G flat, A flat, C flat, E flat, G flat, <laughs> A flat. C flat, E flat, G flat. Lots of flats in this one. What's up, Mariana? Oh, uh, no, that, no, that's not Mariana. That's Marlena. Marilena. Marlena. Sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. It's really small on this on this phone. All right. All right. So let's do A flat minor. If you want to do with, do this with me. Again, this isn't really for beginners. If you're an intermediate player with a a range with a one and a half octave range, then I suggest you do this with me. All right, so this is A flat minor. One, two, eighth note. Mm. Uh. Ready again. Remember to not let my aperture be too big when I'm playing low notes. Because if it's too big, then I get that um I get that that airy attack. Mr. Wink says I got my Jean Paul out. Nice. Is that a trumpet? Enrico says I switched from trumpet to tuba. I still love your videos. You help me out so much. Why you switch to trumpet to tuba, man? But that's all right, though. I'm, I'm glad my videos have helped you out. Reverend. Reverend Robert says, hello, brother. Do you or have you heard of Spit Buzzing by Jerome Callet Or Jeremy. Is that Jeremy? Or Jerome? I don't know this guy's name. <laughs> uh, Callet. The 1SB mouthpiece is exceptional. I have heard of Spit, spit Buzzing. I have never done it, though. Uh, I've tried it, but it's pretty difficult for me. All right. So that was A flat. Let's do A flat again. So I got to make sure that my aperture isn't too big, too wide open to where I get air balls, right? So there's a balance. <laughs> is because the lick that I'm trying to learn has that shape in it. So I want to be very comfortable with that shape, but it adds a note. It does this. It adds, it adds like a, a leading tone, uh, a half step below the root. So for an A flat um, arpeggio, minor arpeggio, that first note is going to be G, which is one half step below a flat. So that's part of the lick, but I'm I need to get really good at playing that minor seventh arpeggio. So that's why I'm kind of drilling these uh, these arpeggios right now. All right, so that's A flat. So let me review. I'm gonna do F sharp, G, and A flat. And I think I'll do each one maybe five times each, like repeat it. Now G. Lost count. Let's do A flat. Next one. Maybe 
maybe I'll do it four times because, or I can take a deeper breath because <laughs> I can't make it all in one breath. All right, I got some questions here. Mr. Wink says, yes, it is. Reverend says, it is, and I'm learning. Nice. Hopefully, you're getting some uh, results from it. Mr. Wink says, what mouthpiece are you using? Right now, I'm using this mouthpiece I've had since maybe sophomore year of, uh, not college, but sophomore year of um, high school. It's uh, Vincent Bach, 3C. Three, three can you guys hear me okay? Can you hear me? Maybe I need to speak up. But, uh, but yeah, it's a 3C. This trumpet is a BNS. It's a BNS uh, Challenger 2 with a reverse lead pipe. Uh, 43 bell. Mr. Wink says loud and clear. Excellent. Reverend says, uh, I bought the, the Khaled 1SB mouthpiece for $185. Mr. Khaled passed away last year. Oh, man. Sorry to hear that. I can finally get above the staff working on my endurance. Excellent, man. Whatever works for you as far as equipment, do it. For sure. Reverend says, yes, you sound great. Your sound is great. Thank you so much. All right, so that was F sharp, G, and A flat. Now let's do A minor. A minor is A, C, E, G natural, A natural, C natural, E natural, G natural, A natural, C natural, E natural, G natural. Lots of naturals here. All right. So we're, we're still at 66 BPM. Eighth notes. Here we go. One, uh, four times through. Four times, uh, four times each. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Let's do this about two more times. One, two, three, four. All right, last time. Here we go. One, two, three, four. There's 24 people here watching. That's excellent, man. Thank you for sharing your time with me uh, to help me out, help out spread this message, to help grow the channel. I need you guys to like the video if you guys like this live stream. If I should do more of this type of stuff, like um, like guided practice, then uh, let me know, and uh, I'll do more of these. David says you practice it with me. That's awesome, dude. So if you like the video, go ahead and like it. I need everyone to like it in three, two, one. Smash that like button for me if you like this type of thing. If not, go ahead and go ahead and do the dislike button. That also tells me as well. All right, here we go. So, um, all right. So that was a natural. Reverend says you got it, brother. Yeah, yes. Do more. Excellent. Okay. I'll do more then. Mr. Wink says, live stream is very helpful. Watching you all the way from Philly. Nice. Matthias uh, says, just warming up with your playlist now, practicing with you. Nice. Excellent. That's cool. I wish I could see you guys and, uh, and, and see you guys practice along with me. That would be excellent too. All right. So that was, that was A minor. Let's do B flat minor. Let's do B flat minor. I'm just going up chromatically. Uh, so it's B flat, D flat, F, A flat, B flat, D flat, F, A flat, B flat, D flat, F, A flat. Again, we're still in the lower lower register, but we're gonna go up too. So, all right. So let's do it. So four times through. Uh, all slurred. Okay. Here we go. One. Two, uh, eighth notes as well. One, two, three, go. Was that four?
more times, I kind of lost count. <laughs> Here we go. Let's do that two more times. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Nice. That was four. I was concentrating. <laughs> this time. All right. Let's do last time. Last time, four times through. One, two. Ready? Go. Nice. So my goal with this is to make sure that each and every note... Let me turn off this metronome real quick. My goal with this is to make sure each and every note is really nice and smooth and connected. I want my air to be nice and flowing and free um, through each and every note. What's up, Jazz Friend 76? He says, the C scale is all I know and can remember. That's the only one I play. I don't play others. Well, you're in luck, dude. If you follow this channel, I have a whole playlist all 12 major scales, all in one playlist. So if you want to go ahead, go on my channel and click on playlist and search and, and look for... Oh, you're a female. Excellent. So so you want to go on, my, um, go on my channel, click on playlist, and, and look for major scales. And I teach you all 12 major scales. I give you the fingerings. I show you the sheet music so you know what it looks like. You should check it out. Cool? Hopefully that helps. So you, you'll learn more than just your C major scale. Excellent. Carter says, can you save this live so I can practice tomorrow because I'm late? Yeah, no problem. Uh, I, would ex I would expect this live stream to post... Um, in the next 12 hours, whenever I'm finished with this. So once I'm finished with this live stream, it should post within 12 hours. And you should have access to it. So no problem. 20 folks in here. That's awesome. That's a whole classroom. I appreciate y'all, okay? Thank you for um, being here and spending your time with me. You could be doing anything else with your time, but you're here with me. And I appreciate you. All right, so that was B flat minor. Now let's do B major. Oh, not B major, B minor. Let's do B minor. So that's B, D natural, F sharp, A natural. B, D, F sharp, A. B, D, F sharp, A. There we go. So I'm gonna do it four times. Uh, we're gonna do sets of three. So each, each set is gonna be four times through. Okay, so let's do the first set. 60 BPM, uh, eighth notes, all slur. One, two, three, four. Let's rest for a bit. Let's do the second one. One, two, ready, go. time here we go one two ready and play nice so again like I, I don't know why I say it again but it's really important that we use our slides because um, that helps lock in the intonation so what I'm listening for, I'm listening for a smooth transition from note to note. I'm also listening for um, same note quality, same tone quality between note to note and intonation and intonation. So I'm making sure that each note kind of locks into place. So I'm playing into the center. I'm hitting the sweet spot of each note. Okay, so that was B, B minor. Now let's do C minor. Jazz fan 76 says, I see you're moving this third valve slide. I've never seen that before. I've never seen jazz musicians use that, use that slide. I never used that third slide. I thought it was just there. <laughs> no, it's not just there. It's It, it could be. But uh, if you use it, it would definitely help your intonation. 
especially if you know the tendencies of each note. So anytime I'm playing, just a general rule, If I, anytime I'm playing this third valve, I'm going to kick this out just a little bit, just to lock in the intonation. So I don't have to work as hard trying to make it sound good. All this does is help me not have to work as hard. Because if I didn't use this, then I'll have to use my ear and my chops to kind of manipulate the sound. And I don't want to do that as much. Because the more I do that, the less my... It, it really hinders my endurance because I'm working harder. I don't want to work harder. I want to help. I want to use this. And um, I can't use this because my, my saddle kind of... It broke off. So if I did have it, I would use this too. For the first valve. Anytime I use this for the first valve. Rest in peace, Mr. Wait, rest in peace, Roy Hargrove. Yeah. Uh, he says Roy Hargrove used the third valve slide all the time. John says keep the pitch down. Yeah, low D and low C sharp. Yeah, low D and low C sharp, they tend to be very sharp on the horn. So uh I use this to kind of lower lower the pitch. So it's very important that we use our slides. So make sure you put grease on it, whatever you need to do, so it's in working order. All right, so that will, we, let's do uh, C minor now. Let's do C minor. So C minor is C, E flat, G, B flat. C, E flat, G, B flat, C, E flat, G, B flat. Let's play that together. 60 BPM, eighth notes, all slur. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Okay. Let's do that two more times, four times um, each. So we're doing three sets of four. So this is our second set. One, two, three, four. Last time. One, two, three, four. you guys doing out there so far as far if, you, if you're playing along with me that's cool um but how you guys liking this exercise i know it's not for every level so it's not for beginners if you don't have the low octave if you don't have the low notes yet and if you don't have like a octave and a half because we're gonna go we're gonna go up we can go up and at the tempo The Rev says, uh, yep, it hurts my chops and my en endurance. The Diz says, I love it whenever I play Ds and C sharps. Oh, I lip it. I, I don't know why I say I love it. Lord have mercy. <laughs> uh, he says, I lip it whenever I play Ds and C sharps. I try not to. I try not to. Only because I'm not trying to work. I'm not trying to work any harder than I need to. So if if I can hear it in tune and if I don't have to lip it, all the better. So that's why I use this. So, so yeah, it's really important to use your slides. David says, even though this is easy for me, I'm I'm just here to support you. Thank you, David, man. I appreciate you. Thank you. Maybe I'll do some um, more difficult, more advanced stuff uh, on the channel. I know most of it is geared towards beginners, but uh, I need some work too, so I, I'm going to be posting things that I'm working on, such such as this. But it's real fundamental, so it doesn't hurt to go over fundamentals as well. What's up, Keith? Good evening. Keith, where are you from? Mr. Wing says, I'm just a beginner. I'm keeping up with you. Uh, I'm using a 7C mouthpiece. Ouch. Why say ouch, man? All right, so... Um, that was C minor, C minor seven. Let's do D minor seven. Keith from Atlanta, Georgia. Nice to meet you, and thanks for joining the live stream, man. All right, so 
D minor. So D F A C D F A C D F A C. Also remember to kick out that third valve tuning slide so we can get it nice and in the tune. Okay. Carter says, how do you know the notes for each of the arpeggios? Um, how do I know? Uh, I can give you the, um, the short answer. I know that in order to create a, a minor seventh arpeggio, from D, the first note, the first, the first two notes has to be a minor third apart. So for instance, the, the arpeggio that we have is D and F. D and F is a minor third apart. And then on top of that, a third above F, that has to be a major third. So, in, so a major third from F is A natural. Now, to make it a seventh chord, because now we have a triad. We have D, and we have F. From D to F is a minor triad, is a minor interval. F to A is a major triad. So in order to make a minor triad, we need a minor third on the bottom and a major third on top. That's how we make a minor triad. Now, uh, in order to make a seventh chord, we need, uh, from the A, from the A, we need a minor, uh, a minor uh, interval. So what's a minor third above A? C natural. So in order to make a minor seventh chord, we need a minor third, a major third, and a minor third. That's the short answer I can give you. So that's how I know. And also just by ear, too. I know what it sounds like. So if you apply that, that formula to each and, every, each and every note, you can create... You, you can create a, a minor seventh arpeggio on any note if you just know that formula. If you know your intervals, then you can. Hopefully that made sense. If not, then let me know. All right, so now let's do, let's do D minor seven. So D, F, A, C. This says, I got some fat, so, fat solos for you, son. It's a PDF, but not sure how to send it. Send it to me. Uh, we're, face we're Facebook friends, so send it to me through uh, Messenger. That would be cool. Or um, uh, or email me at theblacktrumpeter at gmail.com. Theblacktrumpeter at gmail.com. What's up, Ozier? Listening from N NYC, New York City. Excuse me. So D minor seven. Here we go. So three reps, uh, three sets of four. Here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> I'm gonna fill up the note. Let's do it again. One, two, three. time four times through one two three four all right so now we have this C sharp? I think I skipped C sharp. But C sharp is C sharp E G sharp B. ready for 16th notes yet all 
Uh, let's see. Jazz fan seventy six says I've been playing for thirty one years, but have trouble at times. High notes can be difficult, as I said before. Let me turn the spectrum no more. If I can play really, if I can play really high, blood rushes to my head, and I can't play high notes relaxed. Okay, so in order to play high notes relaxed, we have to approach it in a relaxed state first. So <clears throat> what I recommend is that you start on notes that you can play relaxed. So relax the shoulders, relax the neck, relax the chest. Make sure the neck and your head is really relaxed. Make sure your head is at a relaxed position. So not too straight out like this where it's changing my voice, but in a nice relaxed position. And bring the trumpet to you. Don't reach out to the trumpet. Also, you got to you gotta know how to use your air efficiently. So... Um, one way to do that, oh, do I have paper? I think I have paper in my case. But one way to do that is to, sorry, y'all. <laughs> Let me move y'all back. One way to do that is to get a piece of paper and try to hold the piece of paper out with your air and make sure it, it's out in front of you. I don't have paper right here. Maybe I can use this. This is my green part of my green screen. But, like, like, imagine this is a piece of paper. Like, that's the type of air that you need to use. And then as you ascend, you want to use the tongue. As you ascend, you got to use the tongue to help, help you speed up the air more. Um, because that adds a little bit of... Um, Compression. So saying E as in pizza, E, speed up the air. And also with the aperture, make sure the aperture is smaller as you ascend. As you ascend it. And think about think about it as like a laser beam. You want that laser beam to be really focused as you as you ascend. Speed up the air. Say E. And that bring the bring the the arch of the tongue up a little bit as you ascend, speed up the air, and you should be cool. Now, what, what I advise you to do is an easy way to improve your range is to use a chromatic scale because the chromatic scale is the, is the easiest scale that we can do because it has, it, has, um, it has the smallest interval in Western music, which is the half step. So... Um, I would say do something like this. And go, only go a third. So I'm going from C to E. Going. And go to the next note. And only go on. Until it feels easy. Until it feels um, effortless. Don't go on to the next note until it feels effortless. Because we want to practice at a very effortless and easy state. So we that can, tr that can transition as we go up into the other, other register. Um, people use uh, lip slurs and flexibility, but that, that, um, that just isn't... For most people that struggle with range, uh, I feel like the chromatic scale is a, it's a much easier approach than trying to do a large leap, if that makes sense. So the chromatic scale, I think, is the best tool for, for us. Jazzfan76 says, I, I use the fingering chart in my trumpet book. Is that okay to use? Yeah. However, you want um, you, we all need to have a level of proficiency on our trumpet so we can kind of stray away from that and just really focus on the music because the the more you know your trumpet, the um, the less you have to think about the notes, the fingerings, and so you can move on to um, better things, right? So try to memorize the notes 
as much as possible so you don't have to use that reference. So playing scales, memorizing scales, playing playing scales will help you do that. So, uh, yeah. John says the paper trick is old school. Love it. Yeah, I mean that's that's I think that's the that's a good way to teach anyone the concept of fast air and making sure that air is consistent and steady. Because it's a visual thing. Because for trumpet, like we don't have the we don't have the um, the luxury of seeing what we're doing. Everything has to be by feel, everything has to be by Imagine uh, we have to use imagery. So the best way to teach trumpet is to use it, use it, use some form of visual representation. And also feel. I wish there was a way I can tell you to use use this much air pressure at this specific time. And, but I can't. I can't. I can only give you I can only anyone can just give you tools. But it take you have to go in the practice room and feel what that feels like. So um, you have to know what it feels like. And you have to be willing to go up there. Don't be afraid of playing high. I used to be afraid of playing high for a long time, and that, that limited my ability. So uh, don't be afraid to play in those high notes, and don't be afraid to make bad sounds. Because it's going to sound bad at first. <laughs> it's going to sound bad at first. And that's okay. Just just, just keep chipping away. Keep chipping away at it. And while it sounds bad, continually to listen to great sounds. Continue to listen to great trumpet players that have great sounds. So you can program your mind to, to play that way. Ruben says that's a hard part for me because I have a rotary valve trumpet. You go, you guys must be talking amongst yourselves. Beat and swing says, how high is your range? My my range is is however high the job demands. <laughs> but right now I'm working on trying to get the um the double the double G. Um I had to do some tracking. I had to do some tracking um a couple of days ago. And it had a it had a F, it had a high F in the in the reference track. And usually on most most of my gigs, I don't play anything higher than D above the staff. But uh <laughs> yeah, it had it had a high F in it. And um, you know, I've been I've been working up to that, but I never really had to use it. So uh this was my chance. So and it was nice and fat. Like I had to play it nice and fat. Um, but -da -ba -da -ba -da -do -da -da -de. I had to play that. I don't know if that was the right pitch, but, but yeah, I had to, I, it was many takes, many takes F and octave, um, above the staff. Yeah. So there's F in the staff, uh, the, the fifth line F I had to play an octave above that. So, so yeah, right now that's my range. But usually I don't have I don't really have to play anything higher than a D above the staff. But for that, I did. John says P shooter time. Yeah. Trust me, I had like maybe 50 takes on that bad boy. <laughs> to, just to try to get it sound to sound good and not to sound like super out of tune because I was I was I'm actually playing along with somebody so I had to make sure that it was in tune with the saxophone player. Excuse me. Beat beat and swing says cool. I had to play that in in concert. Jazz fan says I can go up to high E flat on a good day. Nice. John says jet tone mouthpiece. Yeah, I had to use a different mouthpiece, so I definitely didn't play the play it on this mouthpiece, for sure. You got to get the right piece for the right job. All right, but 
that was a nice little break. Let's get back to some uh, minor minor seventh chords. All right, so we we did we did D. Now we got to do E flat. E flat is E flat, G flat, B flat, D flat, E flat, G flat, B flat, D flat, E flat, G flat, B flat, D flat. I had a brain fart for a second. All right, here we go. So let's play that. One, two, ready. I lost count, but it sounded good to me anyway. Jazz fan says, I'll be right back. I have to get my trumpet out of the case along with my uh, Yamaha Silent Brass. It's 10 p.m. and I don't want to wake the neighbors. Yeah, cool. I, I will. I'll still be here. All right, let's do it again. Two more times. Four times through. All slurred. One, two, three, four. All right, last time. One, two, three. Mm. That's a good test to review and to see if you can do it without thinking all the way through no repeats there's 25 folks in here that's awesome thank you guys for watching all right let's see if there's any questions or any comments uh beat and swing says would you prefer jazz or classical for learning trumpet uh, jazz, uh, trumpet is, is, um, it comes out of the classical world. So most of the pedagogy is, is in, in classical at least first. Um, that's, that's how you, that's how I learned how to play first. Um, so I don't think there's, there's a better or best way. However, once you get to a point where you have pretty good a good pretty good foundation um then move on to to more advanced things like jazz articulation and and different techniques with with that style i feel like um if if you if you can't play straight apes then you you won't be able to play swung apes Straight apes are, are really important. So get that's the foundational thing that we all need to have under our belts. Um, just to be able to play steady stream of straight apes and then switch it up by playing different playing different um, feels. As that email, email 606 says listening in NC now now from NYP. Nice to have you. Jazz fan says, I always study jazz when I started playing in middle school. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. Yeah, it's cool to, to play both. I'm not saying to choose one or the other. I'm just saying um, that's where the technique comes from is the classical world. So that's where it comes from. So uh, so looking at books like the the Clark books, uh, the Arbin studies and seeing what they say about just playing technique, just playing the trumpet. That's important. Um, now, um, go ahead if you can, if you have, if you can play all your major scales, if you can, if you can play in time, if you can 
Um, if you can use your ear and play by ear, then do that for sure. Use that to, to your advantage to play, to play and start learning jazz because those are very important skills that you need in order to improve. You have to have good time. You have to have good um, technique on your horn. You have to have... Uh... All right, there we go. Sitting on the floor here because I'm I'm cleaning up my my studio space. Finally, Rev says those books are scary. <coughs> Jazz fan seventy six. I never like classical music, and that's okay if you don't. Um, but I feel like if we want to be well rounded musicians on on we we want to be able to play as much thing and as many things as possible because we can never be too pre prepared like there's always going to be something that comes up uh whether whether or not you want to be a professional or whatever or do this professionally but um uh we we want to I I want to play with the best musicians that I possibly can so um I don't want to limit myself with the style I want to make sure that my technique is good in any style. So that's where those books come in handy. That's where like playing etudes and things come in handy. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I'm employed at a church. I play, uh, well, not now because of the, the, pan, the, the pandemic. But, uh, but yeah, I play at a church here uh, uh, in Chicago on the south side. It's called, um, Lord, I'm blanking. That's that's how long I haven't been there <laughs> as far as like um, playing Lord. I'm blanking. Oh, my goodness. OK, well, maybe it'll come to me later. New life. <laughs> Lord, it's called New Life. Uh, Southeast. It's called New Life Southeast with Pastor John Hanna and Pastor Glenn. <sighs> All right, so let's do, we did E flat, let's do E natural. So E, nat, uh, not E natural, but E minor. E minor is E, G, B, D. E, G, B, D. One, two, one, two, ready, go. Two more times, just like that. One, two, three. Mm. Last time. One, two, three, four. for that then epics tiger blitz gaming says do you have e flat two octaves what do you mean like and then up the next octave it's funny that i don't know i i find it really funny when people come come on the live streams just to ask about range and how high I can play. Like playing high is not the only thing a, that a trumpet player can do. Not to say I can't, but bro. <laughs> I can do. 
Epic says I cannot figure out how to reach the second octave. Um, use use a chromatic scale. Use chromatic scale. Um, use arpeggios. Try to get up, get up there as much as you can. Try. Um, and then try to do it up the octave. But you have to do it every day. Uh, you have to try to do it every day. Arpeggios are just notes that are are a third stack. Um, just notes on top of each other. Uh, so uh, notes that are a third apart. So a triad, like uh, on your C scale. <laughs> C, E, G, those are thirds stacked on top. That's considered our arpeggio. The more thirds that you stack, the more um, the more notes that you stack. <laughs> the, like uh, like if it's a if it's a triad, it'll have three notes. If it's a seventh chord, it'll have four notes stacked in third in thirds. Uh, if it's a ninth arpeggio, then it'll have five, and so on and so forth. But they all come from scales. Arpeggios are triad, and Yankee says arpeggios are triads uh, played one note in succession. Italian for to play like harp. Nice. Anderson Anderson says half a tone up is better than no tone at all. Yeah. Three sixty BB says, "Can you show a praise break lick uh, you would do in church?" That's the thing, man. Um, like we don't really do that type of uh, music. Like we don't do too many, too many praise break licks. Like it's really contemporary church, see, contemporary Christian music based. So it's not the old, it's not the old like cut a rug type of stuff. We we do that sometimes, but I really wish we did more of that. Because man, the other stuff is just boring. How do you know if your tone is good? That's a good question. Um you know. Or well, for me, if I know if my tone, if I'm satisfied with my tone, if maybe if if that's what you're asking, I know when I'm satisfied with my tone is when I listen back, and it matches what I hear in my head. So if the tone I'm going for is is like a very, if if the tone the the the, the color I'm thinking of or the the quality I'm thinking of matches the one that's in my head, then I know my tone is good. If it doesn't, then I know I have to I have more work to do. So what I recommend is that you record yourself practicing. Kind of like what I'm doing now with this live stream, just practicing in front of you guys. After this, I'm going to review the tape. I know that makes me sound old, but I'm going to review the tape and see how I sound. Because that's the only way you get better. Uh, you can't rely on teachers to give you everything. What we have to do, because they're not with us 99% of the time. So it's the way you get, you achieve, the way you progress faster is that you 
kind of problem solve on your own by recording yourself, listening back. I know it's going to be hard to listen back, but listen back and say, oh, uh, I kind of slowed down there. Um, maybe I should work on work with the metronome more. Or like, oh, my note was kind of flat there. Maybe I should work on long tones to try to get that pitch just right. So that's the only way you can get faster by reviewing your playing on a consistent basis. So so you're not you're not really so you're not really depending on a teacher to give you everything at the lesson because there's only so much time you can spend in the lesson. There's only maybe 30 minutes or an hour, 45 minutes. So you got to do the work outside of the lesson to um, to get better. Teachers can only give you tools. They can only give you tools to get better. They they guide you. They guide you in the right direction. They give you tools to make things better. But it's up to us to take it home, do our homework, listen back to see if it matches or to see if we're getting better. And then we bring it to, to the teacher with all the homework that we did and then say, this is what we have. This is what we ha This is what I worked on. How can I make it better? Not how can you fix me, if that makes sense. Right. So how do you know if your tone is good? If the tone that you imagine matches or if it's close. So long tones will help me with tone. Yes. Yes. Please do long tones. Please, please. I'm begging everybody. I can tell when when I can tell the ones that 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 do long tones the most even with professional players you can tell who works on long tones because you hear it the sound is there like if it's not pure if it's not if it doesn't have a, a certain quality you know so how do you do long tones uh you hold you hold out a note That can be pretty boring, but think it think of it in a different way. Think of it as meditation almost. And just try to find the, the sweet spot of the note. Can I play this note in the the center and make it really nice and broad and, and full and fill up the room, you know? Maybe maybe the the when I when I practice long long tones when I was younger. Um, I would take songs that I listened on the radio. I would have my, my, at the time, I had my MP3 player. I had my CD player. I would put on my favorite song, and I would just first, by ear, figure out what the key was. Figure out what the major scale I can use. And then I would, I would, play, I would play long tones with the song based on the key. So if it was in, in a major, if it was in A flat major or in a minor key, I would, I would do my scales in whole notes or half notes throughout the entire song. That could be like a three, four, five minute song. Right there, you did five, you did four or five minutes of long tones. And you were having fun doing it. Well, I was having fun doing it. Reading the comments here, Jazz says, the tone I would like to have is like Al Hurt in the 1960s, but I don't have it. My tone isn't that bright or clear. It doesn't help that I'm missing a front tooth either. Well, that too, like we we all have our individual sounds because we're all physically made different. So um, I would say still keep listening, still keep doing your thing and try to play along. That's That's the key. If you can play along, with Al Hurt at some point, uh, even if you have to slow it down, but just playing along helps. So, but we all have we all have different sounds, so we're not going to sound exactly like them unless you just really love Al Hurt or Miles Davis or whatever. Um, 
but we all have our own ind individual sounds. And that's just a combination of things that we like and our, um, our natural physiology. I think that's the word I'm looking for. Will says, thank you for answering my questions. Excellent. Picking the Stone says, the saxophone player in college set me right. He said, even guitarists can practice long tones. You play your stuff real slow and really listen to the note pick, placement, fingers, and record it. Yeah. It's all about slow practice with, with tone development. It's really being aware of what you're doing. Like, just don't play mindlessly. But I'm preaching too much. I need to go back to my... Uh, I need to go back to uh, <laughs> my, my my minor arpeggios. I'm almost done. We're almost done. So we got two more left. So let's do F minor. F, A flat, C, E flat. F, A flat, C, E flat. So let's play that four times in a row. Three sets. All slurred. One, two, three. Mm. <laughs> count but it sounded pretty good one again one two three four <laughs> all right now our last one i think we played i played we played if you're playing along with me um if you stayed this entire time i know i've been on here for about an hour <laughs> but um, I played all 12. That's all 12 right there. Now let's, let's, let's cap it off with, uh, playing the octave. Let's play in the octave. So F sharp. So the next octave is F sharp, A, C sharp, E, F sharp, A, C sharp, E. Let's play that together. Same thing. Four times through all slur eighth notes, uh, three reps. One, two. Three. And then also too, I gotta pick up my wife's medicine in about an hour, so I have to end this pretty soon. Here we go. Uh, second set. One, two, three. set one two one two three <laughs> Stone says, cool to do the Clark Terry triplet thing. 
with arpeggios like F minor 7, F, C, F, A flat, F, A flat, C, A flat, C, E flat, C, E flat, F. So, um, Probably not how he artic articulates it, but gotcha. Reverend says, Maynard Ferguson, William Vacchiano, Lynn Nelson, Stan Mark have a great tone power and endurance and above double C range. And Mr. Clark and a couple more I'm forgetting. Ken X says, don't mean to get off topic. I don't know if this was ever answered. What do you think about memorizing fingerings? When playing a transcribe, trying to transcribe a song, patterns, or even a lick, memorizing fingerings. Uh, I would say, um, work on work on your notes more. Because if you have to memorize fingerings, you, we probably don't know the instrument well enough, so. The best advice for you or for anyone is to really know your instrument so you're not thinking about fingerings. Because when we improvise or play any instrument, we don't want to have to think about, okay, F is one. Well, I don't know why I'm doing guitar, <laughs> but F is one. A flat is two and three, you know? So I would say um, practice your scales a lot more just so you're not, you're not, <laughs> so you're not um, thinking about fingerings you want to think about the shape you want to think about the sound you want to, you don't want to think about your instrument because if you if you're thinking about the instrument you've not we have not done the homework um needed in order to think about other things in the music because there we want to think about dynamics we don't want to think about we want to think about phrasing we don't want to, we want to think about interacting with the band but if we're busy thinking about the mechanics of the instrument, that's going to limit our ability to make music um, at a high level. So really, 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 I stress this. Please learn your scales. Learn your scales in all 12 keys. Learn, learn, learn your scales. Reverend says, I have to leave, leave church. Got to go. All right, Reverend, thank you for, for being here. The entire 65 minutes that I'm, <laughs> I've been streaming, it's good to have you. And everyone that's watching either here on the replay, I appreciate your time and uh, I appreciate you being here with me. You could be doing anything else with your time, but you're here with me and I appreciate you. Each and every one of you, for sure. I appreciate all the interactions with the questions and the conversation. Like, I appreciate y'all. The disc says, these youngins in range, all they care about <laughs> is range. <laughs> right. I get it. I mean, it's cool. It's fun playing. It's, it's fun playing high and, and fast. You know, I'm trying. I'm always trying to better myself, better my range, you know. Obviously, because I did. I had to play that dog on track and play that high F. But, um, but yeah, trumpet is much more than that. Jazz fan says, before you go, I got to play. The Saints go marching in, and I'll try and play. Can, uh, can you, if you can, play? Mm -hmm. What key is it in? What key do you, what key do you want me to play it in? I play it in C, B flat. ONG Uh, 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 uh. 
don't know it. That's a good exercise. In another key. Um, F sharp. training folks scales definitely ear training scales that's the only way I was able to do that if I did, first I got to know the song if I don't know the song then that's not gonna help but ear training so know your know your scales know how the sound know how the song goes and play it in all 12 play it everything in all 12 of course that wasn't all 12 but but yeah that's a good exercise. Do that every day. Take a little little something. Take happy birthday. Take amazing grace. I know I, with one of my students, uh, we're doing amazing grace and we're trying to do it in all 12 keys. But jazz fan says, I wish you could have heard playing along. I wish you could have heard me playing along. Diz says, I'm digging the tenacity. <laughs> Kenex, I don't know if I helped you with my answer, but I know it was a long answer. Let's see if there, let's see if there's any other comments that I was missing. I need to cut my mustache, man. It's getting too thick. I don't like my mustache is extra thick. It gets in the way of my mouthpiece. <laughs> Kenex says yes, kinda. I mean. Oh, you're still here. Good. Um, I, I think I would say don't think about fingerings. It don't think about fingerings. Think about think about anything else but fingerings. Maybe notes. Maybe notes. I would say think about the sound. The sound is more important because it, I just did. I just did. Um, that's I just did like. Um, the song I just did it in multiple keys, and I wasn't thinking about what is E, what is F, what is that. I wasn't thinking about the actual note and the actual fingering. I was thinking about the way it sounds. If that makes sense, I was I was thinking about how the song goes in different keys. So that meant that I needed to know my scales. I needed to know my instrument. I needed to know that this was a major. Um, a, a major, a major song, like um, it sounds major. Da 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 di da 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 da. Mm -hmm. That's a major third. Da 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 da. That's a half step. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. That's a whole step. So it's all about ear training. Don't think about the fingerings. Because the fingerings could mess you up. Because the fingerings could be any note. Because if I press down one and two, that can be. That could be any note within the harmonic series. So think about the sound. Think about the way the, the lick sounds and let that guide you rather than the notes. Plus one, minus one says, what mouthpiece do you use? I use a, a Bach 3C. It's all beat up. I've had this since sophomore year of high school. I really need to get a different mouthpiece so I can be more... Uh, 
efficient. Jazz fan says, I know in the Saints in G and F by heart. Cool. Try to do it in um in a different key. Try to do it in B flat. two flats by the way b flat and e flat everything else is natural but yeah folks uh let me let me review all of the uh minor pen not minor pentatonics why why do i want to say pentatonics today but let me review all the minor uh seventh chords the minor seventh chords <laughs> just one direction i can do i can start from the seventh and go down i can do seven five three one i can do this difficult something i'll need to practice for sure <laughs> going down and then there's another direction i can go up one and down one uh -huh. Too. That's something I need to practice. And then you can do down one, up one. So starting seven, five, three, one, and then up the next one, one, three, five, seven. So yeah, those are four directions, four directions, all up, all down, up then down, and then down and up. Whew. So yeah, I've only practiced right now going all up. 
So next, we'll be going all down. And then after that, a session with going up and down. Then a next session going down and then up. Man. So that's a good that's a good workout. That's a good arpeggio workout. And doing that for uh, major arpeggios, diminished arpeggios, dominant arpeggios, augmented, this gives me access. This gives me more access to the horn, more access to more music. So, so yeah, that's why I'm practicing this. Uh, because the lick that I'm learning is this. Um, and I think I've done this in another live stream. the line but but yeah it ha it has that minor it has that minor seventh um shape in there so that's why i'm practicing it excuse me all right y'all so it was fun being on here with you guys if you guys have any questions oh kenick says <laughs> yeah web city that's where it's from Although I don't do that triplet thing that, that Fats does. I, I kind of switched it up and just, I'm holding it out. Kenick says, uh, so as, as you're playing through the arpeggio, what do you see in your mind? The notes or the letter? Of the, uh, what I see in my mind, that's an excellent question. Um, I'm, seeing, I'm, I'm seeing the notes. But I want to get to a place where I don't the lead in, right? Um that that lick is like the second phrase. Like this I think the second phrase in that song. Um Yeah, it's like a ghost triplet thing. Yeah, and plus that that first phrase is up an octave, but yeah, that's the second phrase off off that uh off that tune. But when I when I do the arpeggio, like if I'm really thinking about it, I'm thinking about the um I see the notes. I see the notes in my head. <laughs> see the notes that's a good question however i want to get to a, a spot where i don't i'm not thinking about the notes i want to i want it so ingrained that it's hard for me to mess up like i want to have it that ingrained in my soul this says i know exactly what you mean i'm sending you some gold waiting till you get it thank you so much Kenex says, and of course you know the shape of the of the sound, so your ears assist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's important too. So if you know what it sounds like, that definitely helps. I, that definitely helps me play the arpeggio. For sure. So definitely know what a minor seventh sounds like, so you can then apply that to all types of keys. Yep. Yep. You can do that same thing with any arpeggio or any scale. Just make sure you know what it sounds like uh, first. But uh, let's see what time is it. It's going on 10 o'clock here in Chicago. If you guys like this type of content, like if you like, um, like this kind of informal type of live stream, I'm just here practicing. 
And you guys are just like the fly on the wall <laughs> with me practicing. If you guys like this content, go ahead and like the video for me. Um, so this can this can help the channel grow. And uh and yeah, so uh, I would I would love for this channel to get to 50 50 K by the end of the year. That's my goal for this year. Whether I reach it or not, that'll be it's it's whatever, but that's the goal for this year to get it to 50k. Um, that would be amazing. So if you could do me a favor by liking the video if you like it and share it with your friends, you know, that would help too. So if you guys want me to do more of this stuff, more of this like practice along with me or um, or whatever, just let me know. Just let me know and I'll do more. The dis says, uh, sent, check, check email, son. Let me know if you get it. Yeah, I'll, I'll see. I'm on my phone right now, so I'll see if I, uh, if I can uh, see it on my email. Jazz fan seventy six says he gave it a like. Thank you so much. Yankee says thank you. Uh, Psych plays says I did. Thank you so much for everyone that's liking the video and watching. That's either here live or here on the replay. So, uh, yeah, we're, while we're in this quarantine, I'm waiting for my baby girl to be born uh, anytime now. And um, uh, I'm trying to get as much practicing done. I'm trying to get this place looking sharp and clean. And, and yeah, before the baby comes sometime soon. This says word. I send it to the black trumpeter at gmail.com. Yep, that's right. Yep, that's my email. Thank you so much. I'll be looking for it. Jose says, I question, how can I improve my sound? Uh, I would say do long tones. Like first, actually, listen. Listen. You wanna you wanna absorb as many good sounds as possible. So whoever your favorite trumpet players are, whoever your favorite instrumentalists are that could be singers that could be anybody but continue to listen on a daily basis and play along with them play along with them this will help you improve your sound because it over time that stuff will kind of meld into your playing and i'm a prime example of that when i first started playing trumpet that's what i did um I had my Essential Elements book, and it came with a CD. I I took that CD out. I put it in my little silver boom box, and I pressed play. I put my headphones in, and I played along. I played along. And I did that every single day, every single day. And what I didn't realize was that I was programming my head, programming my embouchure, my sound, my air, um to make good sounds, to copy what I was listening to. Um, and your brain and your body will do what it needs to if you give it the right information. So provide yourself with the right information with good sounds on a daily basis. Try to play along with them. I know that's a little bit abstract, but that's something very practical that you can do every single day. Of course, do long tones. You know, of course, do long tones like that's a must, but um, play along with your favorite recordings. Uh, learn your scales. Uh, if you're a more advanced player or a more intermediate player, I would say um, practice doing some lip bends. So. <laughs> So I did G, F sharp, G. Now, the key with doing a lip bend is to change the note without without using your vowels. So I'm going to I'm going to go to F sharp, but I'm going to use my embouchure to do that. That's really cool because then you get to really find the sweet spot, find the sweet spot of the note, and you just 
you just dial it in. Like you uh if if you ever kind of play with those old radios and it has that dial, or maybe in like a car, like you had that that air, the AC dial, you dial it in. And that's what that's what you do when you play lip bends. You're dialing in to get it right there, right in the center. Not the center, but the sweet spot of the note. So do that on, on each and every note that you play. so on and so forth until you get to low F sharp right so I would say lip bends listen to good sounds on a daily basis try, try to play along with those players even if you have to slow it down um, and the key is you want to hear more of them than you. You want to hear more of them in your headphones or whatever you're doing. You want to hear more them than you because you want to try to fit, fit and slot right inside their sound. Like you don't, you don't want to, um, uh, you, you want to match their frequencies as much as possible. So that's what's good about putting on headphones and listening and playing along. So I recommend doing that because that's what I did and that helped me a lot. And that that was the foundation of my technique. That was the foundation of everything. And that's what helped me really progress was having a good sound. Because over time, then I didn't really need need to play along. I didn't really need it. Because I had ingrained it so so much that I heard it without even having to press play on the recording. So that's important. That's important. Ingrain it so much that you can even hear it in your sleep. You can hear it in silence. You can still hear that beautiful sound that, that you're going for. Does that make sense? Jose says, thanks. Can you explain uh, pedal tones, please? Pedal tones are just notes that um, that are lower than F sharp. So, so what you want to do is use the same fingerings. Don't use alternate fingerings. Use the same fingering. So if it's F, then you're going to use one. So one way to get down there is to play, um, is to play a triad. Play a major, you can play any triad, but usually I play uh, a major triad. So start from start from G in the staff. Start from G in the staff, and play your major triad. So it's gonna be G E C. This is low C now, and then we're gonna go down in half steps. The next is F, is uh, B, starting on F sharp. And then uh, B flat major. And then A major. Uh, A major. And then A flat major. And then G major. And then F sharp major. Now we're hitting the low, the lowest note on the trumpet. Now you want to keep going, keep going, keep going. So now we're going. So that's that's the that's what we're gonna play, but it's gonna be down an octave. Uh, 
The next note is. So those are pedal tones. Use the same fingerings. But I got to pick up my wife's medicine. I got to drive about 20 minutes to Indiana to pick up her medicine. Uh, it was great um, connecting with you all, talking to, with, talking to you all, hanging out. And I'll see you guys on... Oh, wait, wait, wait. So I'm going to do a live stream. I'm going to do a live stream on how to play uh, I Feel Good by James Brown. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, that's going to be live. I'm going to have the music on the screen. So be on the lookout for that live stream, uh, a live let's play of, or well, let's practice of I Feel Good. So make sure you're there. I think I'm going to do it sometime in the afternoon. So be on the lookout. But that's it, folks. I'm, I got to go. And you guys take care. Stay safe. Stay inside. And peace. See you in the next video. Bye.